Hello everyone and welcome to Go Again, a fabulous cast. I'm Andrew and it's just me today. So in all of my years of gaming, I don't know that I've seen a CCG or a TCG as well set up for limited play as is Flesh and Blood. Uh, the company came out very strong. It was very focused in their original setup. So that's what I want to do today is I want to talk limited Flesh and Blood. So limited play has been in Fab's charter from the get-go, and you can see this, this is quite obvious, not just from what LSS has said on their website, but also just in how they structured the booster packs, right? The booster packs themselves come with tokens that have the, that, you know, the tokens are the young hero, it's the weapons. It has everything that you would really need to be able to play at least a uh, basic level game, even out of just the booster packs, which of course then supports this type of play. So before we get in too much today talking about the limited and the, sealed in the draft formats. Um, some of you may be new to gaming and may not be familiar with the term limited, so I wanted to cover that real quick. So a limited format is so-called that because it requires players to build from a more limited pool than your normal constructed play. So whereas a normal constructed play, you're gonna use everything you own, you're gonna throw your best cards in a deck or try to make some streamlined deck and then bring that to a tournament or just bring that to play with your friends, uh, what limited does is you actually sit down and with a group of people at the same time, you're going to open a specified amount of product and then you're going to try to build what you can out of that. And then everyone will compete on the equal and unequal footing really that day. Right. And, and that's one of the advantages um, is that everyone kind of just gets together and they open the same number of packs and everyone's just kind of on the same footing for that particular day. Um, I mean, the disadvantage that can be that, you know, sometimes if someone opens a super good card, that can give them an advantage. Um, so there is a little bit of luck to it, um, which is why some people will prefer draft over sealed or vice versa. Um, but really what it does is it just gives you a different spin on the game, right? Because you have to essentially problem solve in order to get to where you are, right? You have, you have a set number of resources and you have to solve the best problem for that deck and then you have more situations that don't come up because in normal play because things are slightly less efficient so a lot of people really enjoy it um, you do also have those out there who like draft because they think that they're smarter than everyone else and can kind of get the better cards and you know maybe pay three packs worth of entry and walk away with five packs worth of rares or stuff um, so you're always going to have draft hunters too right but really from the fundamental game standpoint everyone just likes to be on the same page and see who can kind of figure out the problem the best all right. So, um, you know, of course, the young hero versions is really what Fab has brought to the table to facilitate this. So, you know, each one of the heroes who we've seen so far has a young hero version. Um, they're all really the same. They have the same abilities, but they, of course, have less health. This makes way less sense when you're going to be play, playing naturally much less efficient play. It makes sense to have a, le a lower health pool with which to move forward on. Um, so again, let's just go through the booster contents just real quick. So you get 15 cards plus one token. And let's talk about why this actually makes a lot of sense for doing limited play. So the token itself is self-explanatory, right? You're going to need the hero. You're going to need the weapon in order to be able to play this game. But what it really comes down to for me on the well design of this from a limited standpoint is actually the way that they divided up the commons, right? So instead of just giving 11 random commons, which you know, in theory, you could, I guess, open a pack that had 11 brute commons in there, right? So what they've actually done is they've divided those commons up. You get four generics guaranteed. So those generics will be able to be, able to be played in any deck, which means that if you're opening packs, you're at least going to have some amount of cards that no matter what happens, you're going to be able to use. And then there's seven class commons that are mixed. So in theory, I guess you could get seven brutes in one pack. It's probably not going to happen. Um, as far as the others go, um, it can be kind of whatever happens there. Uh, there is the one equipment per uh, pack that's guaranteed as well. Now, what's interesting is that in some of the formats, you actually don't open enough packs in that for everyone to actually start with the four equipments that they normally would. So you're not necessarily going to always uh, start full as we would normally see in constructed play. But, but that's okay because everyone, again, is on the same footing. Okay, so let's just go into deck construction uh, real quick. Obviously, in limited play, whatever it may be, only young heroes are legal, which makes complete sense, right? Um, deck construction 
is of generic and class cards. Now, what that means is that if you are playing a warrior hero, right, if you're playing Young Dorinthia, you still have to follow the rule that you can only have warrior cards in your deck. So it's warrior cards and generics, of course. So you can't play Brute, you can't play Guardian, you can't play Ninja, right? It has to all be warriors. So you have to stay on class. Um, and that's why really with, like I was talking about with the way that they've divided up the commons, it's really a smart way to kind of set their booster packs up for that. Um, what's also interesting is that in limited format for both the formats, there's no card limit, right? So if you were to pull right now in constructed, you could play up to nine copies of the same card, meaning three of each pitch value, right? If you were to pull five copies of a, I think the example they use is scar for a scar, right? If you were to pull four copies of scar for a scar, one pitch, you could still play that, right? You're not limited like you are in constructed play. So if you somehow get lucky, Go for it, grab those good cards. All right, so uh, as far as limited goes, there's really two uh, ways that we can do this. So we can move on to a sealed format or we can move to draft. So what I wanna talk about first is doing uh, booster drafts because uh, I want to finish talking about sealed and we're actually gonna do some uh, sealed stuff in this next week. Okay, so uh, for draft, what you're going to do, so. The general concept for draft, for those who are not familiar, is that um, you will open a pack and you will take a card out of it, and then you will be passing that around. So the same pack will actually go around the table. Um, memory is involved because you will, in most cases, see the same pack come around the table multiple times with stuff out of it. So if you, you, what you're trying to do is keep track of not only what you've taken so that you can try to strategically get stuff out of other packs, but you may realize that someone to your right or someone upstream of you is downstream or upstream of you is taking certain things. Um, so you can try to figure out what they might be after as well. And sometimes if you don't need a card or there's not a card in the pack that you want, maybe you can try and take a card. It's a term called hate drafting where you can actually try and take a card that you know somebody else wants. So there's a lot of uh, fun in that, in that it's a very social activity as it goes around the table, kind of just trying to figure out Oh, what everything is. So uh, the way it works is uh, three packs, right? Which should give you, it gives you 45 cards, right? So what's going to happen is you're going to, uh, when you open a pack, you're going to remove all the tokens. All the tokens get thrown in the middle. And then the idea in limited play is that there's either store supplied or group supplied uh, tokens, meaning the characters and the weapons, such that nobody has to worry about drafting specific like you don't have to worry about drafting Thea and her weapon. You don't have to worry about getting Thea and not getting her weapon, right? The tokens are in play or the tokens are available for everyone to use. So what you're going to do in draft is you're going to open your first pack. That token goes in the middle and then you're gonna choose one card out of that pack that you want, right? You may wanna choose the super shiny one, right? Maybe that's what you're after. Um, but if you're going to be trying to win that tournament, what you're going to be looking for is really the most value card that you can get out of that. Now it's sometimes hard to begin, but that's part of the fun is trying to figure it out as things go. And again, that's remember of, you know, so let's say you're drafting with six other people, you know that when you pull this card, you're gonna see that same card back in six cards. So you wanna make sure to look through the whole pack or six rounds, you wanna make sure to look through the whole pack, see what's in there and try to remember it. And it can be much of a challenge. So that first pack, you're going to choose a card and you're gonna pass left. You're gonna keep going around the circle until that entire pack has been drafted. You're then going to open your second pack, remove the token, choose one card, and then you're going to pass it to your right. And then that will go all the way around until it's gone. And then last, you will open the third pack and it will go back to the left, repeating. At the end, you're going to have 45 usable cards. Um, they also have the bobble will show up. The bobble is really just intended to be essentially a pitch resource card in case you could not fill up your deck. Um, they do claim that uh, you would have had to have kind of screw up your draft in order to be able to use that, but don't worry about that at all. If you're going to have to use a couple baubles, it's not a big deal. Um, it, it's really not a big deal, right? It just gives you pitch cards that you're going to be probably using anyway. Okay, so that's draft, and then after you form, after you do all your stuff, you make your deck, and then you're going to play a normal tournament uh, with your buddies or at the store. All right. And then it comes down to sealed deck. So sealed deck, the idea behind a sealed format is that you will be assigned, you will just get sealed product and you don't have to worry about passing it or sharing it or anything like that, right? You're assigned your product, you're gonna open it and then just very simply build the best deck you can out of it. So for sealed deck, each player is gonna get six booster packs. Then you build your 30, 30 card deck from the card pool. 
Um, do remember that uh, your tokens, again, will be uh, commonly supplied. So if you don't open Thea and her weapon, don't freak out about it, right? You'll be able to get that from the store. What you're really just gonna be looking at in your pool is what can I do the best with? If it's Brute, go with Brute. If it's Ninja, go with Ninja, whatever it may be. Don't have to worry about whatever tokens you got. You're gonna have the tokens available. Um, and then really, so sealed decks pretty much, pretty the, much the straightforward of them. Um, you just kind of do your best and, and go from there. So uh, what we are going to be doing in the next, or what I'm gonna be doing in the next video, uh, LSS sent me some packs. So I'm actually going to be opening six packs. I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes. Um, usually you will get longer than 20 minutes to kind of open your packs and put your deck together. But the reason I wanna keep it at 20 is uh, with the fact that I'm gonna be opening it and doing it and learning. I wanna be sure that I have extra time to kind of mimic if I were at a store of being distracted by people and talking. Um, at the end, you always wanna sleeve up your cards and then run through the deck a couple times anyway and kind of start figuring stuff out. So usually you're gonna get 25 to 30 minutes to do this type of activity. So I wanna short us. I'm gonna try and keep that timer to 20 minutes and see how we do. Maybe I make it, maybe I don't. I don't know, we will see. So. Um, that's pretty much all I have for today. I'm really excited about getting my hands on some sealed uh, practice. Um, I think sealed is really kind of what appeals to me right now in this game. Um, maybe in the future we'll try some draft. But uh, yeah, so anyway, join me in the next video. Uh, it'll come out the day after this uh, with just some sealed deck building and we'll see how we do. So. In the meantime, if you're excited, uh, no, actually most of the big tournaments that they've been doing, the callings have all been sealed in draft, right? They do one and then they do cut to the other. Um, those are the 10K tournaments that have been going around. Remember, we have the calling in Austin coming up here very shortly in the United States. So that's very exciting. Make sure to get signed up for that if that's something you want to do. Uh, so in the meantime, if you're enjoying what we're doing here on the channel, please like and subscribe and let me know your feedback. And if nothing else, go Commando.